Um, I just would love to know um, kind of how the committee is thinking about um, the persistence we've seen in housing inflation. Um, you know, do you think you can return to 2% with housing inflation where it is? Um, yeah. Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in and something sinister is happening in the housing market. And so today I'm gonna take you guys into the monthly, brand new monthly housing market report from Zillow. And then after that, I'm gonna take you guys into a market watch report on Fannie Mae's confusion about the housing market. And where we're gonna end the video is by accessing a very detailed, comprehensive report on the housing market from the University of Harvard. And some of the conclusions that they've made on the housing market, to say the least, are very, very interesting, especially when they say in a few years, the only thing that is gonna drive home growth is immigration. But I'm gonna start the video out by taking you guys into my local MLS because remember, real estate is about location, location, location. And these data providers, Redfin, Zillow, CoreLogic, Realtor.com, none of them are gonna give you the true picture of what's actually going on in the housing market. And if anyone wants to ask me, hey, Travis, is now a good time to buy a house? I would say right now is the worst time to buy in the history of the United States from a math mathematical standpoint and because the housing market is so toxic the math matters even more and so what i'm going to do again i'm going to start by taking you into the mls and i'm going to show you guys how the math works and this is something that generally you pay a realtor tens of thousands of dollars to do if they even do it at all step one we have to price our market out. What you guys are looking at right here is what's called the MLS or the multiple listing service. This is why you guys need realtors. Now, if I know nothing about the housing market and I see this, this is overwhelming amount of information and I'm flying blind. What I need to do is figure out the price of my market. I know my market peaked in 2022, so I'm gonna price my market based on all of the homes that sold in 2022. I'm only looking at sold data, which is the most important thing on MLS, by the way, is the comps, comps are sold property. So all I'm doing is looking at all of the homes sold for the year of 2022, and I'm specifying what city that I wanna look in. And when I do that, it shows me 516 comps when I hit results. 516 comps in the city that I want to price, I select all of the comps. If you're using Zillow, you would add all of this together and divide by 516. That's why I always say do the subdivision and not the entire city. But nevertheless, all I'm going to do here is hit stats and hit tabular. Now I have some ammunition and I'm not as blind. I know that the average home in Kingwood for 2022 sold for $148 a square foot. You guys want to look at price per square foot, not how much granite a house has. It's about the math. Remember that. I want to come back to MLS. At least I know $148 a square foot, but there's still too much data. It's still too noisy. And just real quick, isn't that amazing? Everyone that's been following me and been watching Kingwood, because remember, I kept you guys for two years stuck in that small Kingwood box. Look at how much inventory I now have in that market. Absolutely shocking. But my point is, is we have to filter the data. What I'm going to do is adjust the criteria of my search by putting the maximum price per square foot at $120. So what I've done is I filtered out all of the overpriced houses per se, and everything you're looking at right now should be about 20%, roughly 20% under 2022 values. Literally, everything is on your screen should be under market value. But I will also say that we don't really know what market value is because the housing market is so broke, but look at how much easier this is. Now, if I find a home that I want, say it's this house, I will select it. I'm gonna do an analysis now on the subdivision. So instead of using Kingwood, I'm just gonna copy and paste this subdivision right here, which is Bear Branch Village, and I'm gonna do the same type of analysis on that subdivision. Now, after that, I'm gonna figure out roughly what my payment is gonna be by either communicating with my loan officer and making sure they're using the proper property taxes and homeowners insurance, or I'm gonna do it myself by finding out what the property taxes and home insurance are. I want you guys to note that this home is being listed for $289,900. Now, when we go to the taxes, let's see what the county is assessing the market value at. Instead of assessing it at 289, the county is actually assessing the market value at 301. Houston, 
we have a problem. Nevertheless, I need to get this amount right here, which is the taxes for 2023. Obviously, when we start 2025, this will all adjust. And here's the thing with Harris County, property taxes are going up. So if you are going to buy a house right now, expect all of those adjustable expenses like taxes and insurance to keep going up. Now that I have my taxes, I'm going to estimate about $3,000 for insurance, or I'm going to call someone. And then I'm going to go to Google. I'm just going to type in mortgage payment calculator. I'm going to hit includes taxes and insurance. I'm going to put the home price right there, put the down payment. I'm going to put today's interest rate. I'll put the property taxes, for example, $6,500. I'll put the insurance, say about $3,000. And it's going to give me a roundabout idea of what my mortgage payment would be at various down payments, this one being 20% down. Really Real quick reminder, if you guys get a $324,000 loan, a mortgage stands for a death contract because you end up paying back $747,000 unless you refinance, you start the amortization schedule all over again. And to show you guys how bad this really is, understand that the first year you're making mortgage payments on that loan, only $3,500 goes towards principal and $21,000 goes towards straight raw interest. In fact, the total interest you pay over 30 years is 423,000. In other words, your real cost of interest is more like 120%. So if you're renting right now, understand more than likely, it depends on the size of the house and location, of course, but if it's an equal size and of equal statue, you're going to be paying a lot more right now owning. And here's the other thing, you guys, this is not even counting property taxes and insurance. When we count property taxes and insurance and we put that in an equation to calculate an interest rate, it's probably more like 150 to 160% interest rate. At least when I'm renting, I can save money and I can move whenever I want. Moving on to Zillow's housing market report for September 2024, a couple of things from Zillow. Lower mortgage rates brought both buyers and sellers back to the market in September, proving their readiness to return when conditions are right. New listings and sales both moved closer to pre-pandemic norms. That is not accurate whatsoever. We are not even close to pre-pandemic norms. I have this chart right here showing us the purchase demand. As you can see in the blue, it is way down here being one of the worst years since before the great financial crisis. In other words, demand right now in the housing market, it's a dumpster fire. For a buyer who could have afforded the mortgage payment on a typical home in May, mortgage rates falling to a two-year low to 6.08% in late September meant a boost of more than $40,000 in buying power over the past four months. As of the date of this recording, which is the 17th Thursday, rates are 6.63%. You wanna know why they're like this? Because the Federal Reserve started their rate cut campaign. And so mortgage rates have now gone up because the market has been pricing in rate cuts since April. In other news, buyer markets are spreading across the Southeast. The return of sellers to the market appeared stronger than that of buyers, continuing to lift the pull of active inventory. And what we have is inventory is going up. So the demand is not absorbing the inventory and the inventory is already historically low and ease competition pressure slightly over September. While the housing market nationwide remains neutral, according to Zillow's market heat index, Atlanta joined a growing list of large southern metro areas that have tipped in favor of buyers. And this really is gonna go into how bifurcated or how vastly different the housing markets are right now. And when I say vastly different, one of the things I'm not talking about is affordability. Virtually every housing market is unaffordable. And my ultimate recommendation, if you want to know, should you buy a house right now? Unless you can find a steal and you know what that is and you're really, really financially ready and you know what that is, just keep renting and saving your money and love your life and understand what is a home? Answer that question, guys, in the comment section below. What is a a home. Some people would say a home is something that you own, but the people that say that in a way you guys are just glorified renters themselves because you will never, ever outright own your home because of things like property tax. If you stop paying your property taxes, and we have a massive problem here in Texas with that, the city will sell your information to a bunch of tax collector wolves who will try to foreclose and take your home away. So you never outright own 
your home. Just want to make that clear. Talking about home values, the typical U.S. home value is $360,999. The typical monthly mortgage payment, assuming a 20% down payment, is $1,760. Home values climbed month over month in only two of the 50 largest metro areas in September, meaning 48 metros went down month over month in home value. 48 out of 50. New York and Providence were the only two that went up month over month. Very interesting. Home values fell on a monthly basis in 44 major metro areas. The biggest one, and this is just month over month, San Francisco down 1.1%, San Jose down 0.9%, New Orleans down 0.8%, Austin 0.8%, and Tampa 07 all pretty much usual suspects. You got Florida, Texas, and California with an add-on of New Orleans. Home values are up year over year in 43 of the 50 largest metro areas, with the leader actually being San Jose. So even though San Jose is on the leading month over month decline list, it's also the leader in the year over year increase list, which goes back to why the math is so important. This is not gonna tell you whether or not you're getting a good deal. Now, home values are down year over year in seven metro areas, which are New Orleans, 4%, Austin, 4%, San Antonio 2.7, Birmingham, which I've been to and I told you guys that was gonna be on this list at 0.7%, Tampa at 0.5%. There were 21.6% more listings in September compared to last year. So even though new listings, the growth of new listings isn't necessarily keeping up year over year and definitely not pre-pandemic, inventory is. The actual unit amounts are because there is not enough demand to absorb the inventory. 25.1% of listings in September had price cuts. However, 30.5% of homes sold above their list price, again, demonstrating how bifurcated the housing market really is. New pending sales increased 3.5% year over year. Very interesting to see pending sales. And I also want to note that's not closed sales. So if those people went under contract last month, guess what? Their interest rate's now a half a point higher. And if they maxed out the pre-qualification, they no longer qualify because of debt to income ratio thresholds. This has several different types of information right here. This one's home values. And I suggest you just go down this list, starting with Austin. And again, bifurcated, look at Austin. I mean, by really any rational account, I think we can now say overall, Austin, Texas is crashing in home prices. You can clearly see the peak right here, which was mid 2022, massive decline. And just keep going down this list and get an idea for what's going on. I suggest you guys look at Florida and Texas. Here's Birmingham right here. So I went to Birmingham. You see kind of Birmingham just fizzling out right there. I've also been to Boise. You see a massive drop here in Boise in an attempt to ratchet back up, but still way off peak. Here's our first Florida city right here. And and you can see Florida also clearly going down. Pretty much every metro area, most every metro area in Florida is showing a downward trajectory. But also look at some of these other metro areas like Cleveland. I've been keeping my eyes on Cleveland. Massive amount of investor purchasing in Cleveland. That's one of the primary things wrong with the housing market. There's too much Wall Street investment and speculation. When we jump into Market Watch, we get to learn what Fannie Mae CEO says about the housing market, which is they've never seen a housing market like this before. This article came out yesterday, October 16th. Now, obviously, Fannie Mae is the long arm of the Federal Reserve. That's what I like to call them. And what they're saying is it's pretty much useless. We already know this actually. It's high. Highly unaffordable market right now. We are monitoring and following all of these trends, things that we've never seen before. And I would say to Fannie Mae, if you guys want to make a difference, stop buying loans that are in violation of the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act. There was a reason why that legislation passed. It passed to keep the consumers safe. What Fannie Mae is doing is allowing banks to continue to thrive and rob us of our generational wealth. Fannie Mae buys these loans in violation. In fact, we know that because we have a CFPB report that says in 2018, 16% of total loans, it was almost 1 million, were in violation of qualified mortgage law. And my question is, is well, then why did Fannie Mae buy them? Home sales are on track for the worst year since 1994. 
five, home ownership is still part of an American dream. Most Americans aspire to own a home. About 84% of respondents in 2023 survey by LendingTree said they want to become a homeowner. Housing costs pushed up by unstable variables. Does that include inflation? It's not just the challenges of saving for a down payment. So nothing about the price, okay. And of navigating elevated mortgage rates. Again, nothing on the price that are making home ownership unaffordable for many Americans. See that? Unbelievable, right? Rising insurance costs also mean homeowners are struggling more to fit their mortgage payments into their budget. Unlike a mortgage payment, which remains the same throughout the life of the loan, if it's a fixed rate, insurance costs have surged over the last few years, adding instability to an otherwise stable 30-year loan. Recent natural disasters, including Hurricane Milton and Helene, which caused significant damages in parts of the southeastern U.S., illustrate the challenges climate change is posing on homeowners and to the housing industry. There is a gap between how much risk is understood by homeowners and what the private sector companies know. Don't forget that. The reason why institutional investors are becoming net sellers of properties is because it doesn't math out anymore. Remember, you guys, investors use math, not emotion, and you should do the same thing. In fact, you should actually just push pause and probably not buy a house right now and let the dust settle in the house market so we can figure out what's going to happen next and not be trapped in an investment that we regret for the rest of our lives. I know that that's coming from my experience because I had a foreclosure and I regret that situation to this day. I'm glad I learned from it. You learn from the pain, you learn from the loss, but there's just better ways to learn. The state of the nation's housing 2024. This is from Harvard University. I'm not going to go over everything. I did mark this up a little bit. I'm going to zoom in for you guys right now. I'm going to kind of just skim through this. I want to get to immigration because this is the first report that I've read that talks about declining birth rate and immigration and those impacts on the housing market. So I thought that was really good. Definitely come back to check this out. A lot of information here. If you guys just want general stats on what's going on. Figure five, which is monthly payments of the median priced home now exceed three thousand dollars. Now, it's important to first understand that these numbers are adjusted for inflation. So really important to understand that. But I wanted to show you guys that we peaked out right here where that red dot is and look at monthly payments basically went down right here to 2022. Do y'all see that? And it took from 2006 to about 2021, 15 years to get to the same mortgage payment that we had in two 2006, we got robbed by something called Operation Twist, which was quantitative easing, which pulled in Wall Street into the housing market. And that is the primary reason why this even went up. This is unnatural because, again, 2012 QE, remember that when you look at prices. A couple of Harvard's outlooks, starting with the first section right here, just so you guys know what they're saying, and then we'll analyze that. Looking forward, housing costs are likely to remain high. On the for sale side, home prices are set to rise in the face of highly constrained supply. Let me know if you agree with that. Prolonging this unusually difficult market for first time home buyers. Now, on the rental side, there may be some affordability gains in the nil term. Wage growth is high. How can they say that? That is crazy that they have that statement in here, but whatever. And the nearly 1 million new multifamily units currently under construction will soon come online, suppressing rent growth. But subdued rent growth will not last long. New construction starts are dropping rapidly. Wage growth is not high. Inflation and taxes and other costs are high, not our income. Further pressuring the housing market are the nation's shifting demographics. Housing demand will remain strong in the near term, fueled by immigration surge. However, demand is expected to slow over the longer term. Native-born population growth is decelerating and will soon turn negative isn't that crazy? As baby boomer mortality rates overtake birth rates, immigration will then become the primary, albeit much less predictable, source of population and household growth. Wow. For the second half of 2022, we had deflation or price decline in the housing market, which was roughly about three months after quantitative tightening. Let's see what they have to say. 
After a brief period of decline, home prices turned upward in early 2023, despite persisting higher interest rates. And they don't mention the bank term funding program. They don't mention that, which was a bailout and signal to the markets. We had the second, third, and fourth biggest bank failure in 2023. And this report does not mention that at all. It's just basically saying after a brief dip, home prices have re Turn. Obviously, the quantitative tightening and inflation led to the market capacity not being meant. Inflation allowed for more absorption through loose lending guidelines and investor speculation, which is Wall Street. And I'm going to add on there, and I put a note, immigration. I'm not saying this. This is Harvard. Immigration levels swelled in 2022 and in 2023. Y'all see what I mean? Look at the amount of immigration in the purple lines in 2022 and in 2023. Look at the acceleration. In 2019, we had less than 500,000, but look at in 2023, what? 4 million? Are you kidding me? Less than 500,000 immigrants in 2029 to 2.6 million in 2022 and 3.3 million in 2023 asylum seekers and humanitarian parole grantees from Central and South American countries, this is crazy, listen, drove much of this growth. Wow. Recently arrived immigrants are already influencing housing demand and housing growth. In 2022, 35% of immigrants age 18 to 64 who arrived within the previous five years headed a household. Wow. The surge in immigration comes as natural population growth, birth minus deaths is slowing with 3.65 births and 3.15 million deaths, a tolling for net 500,000 citizen growth. The outlook is this, in the near term, the growing numbers of younger and more diverse households heated by Gen Zers and millennials will fuel and shape housing demand. So too will the large number of older households heating by aging baby boomers, as well as the millions of recent immigrants who have entered the country over the previous two years. Again, nothing about Wall Street here. In the longer term, however, younger generations may be unable to form households fast enough to outpace baby boomers' rising mortality rates. Holy smokes. Jeff, this is what you've been saying. Instead, a decline in the natural population growth rate may accelerate as projected by both the CBO and the Census Bureau, leaving immigration as the primary and potential sole driver of population and household growth. In conclusion, what does all of this mean? Well, in my opinion, this is what this means. If we're renting right now, if we're choosing to be on the sidelines, we have time. We should be taking our time. We should continue to save our money as renters. I pay way less money renting right now. I can move whenever I want. I have the ability to take the money I'm saving and buy gold or treasuries if I want to. Something very safe. So although I think, again, it is the worst time to buy a house right now, maybe you'll get lucky and find a steal. It's still, no matter the housing market, no matter the condition, it's always important to use the math over your emotions. Now, other than that, I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get you guys another housing market update video. I've been doing a lot. We plan on taking 2025 by storm and changing the world. And that's not easy to do. So if you guys can share the video, like it, comment below. And if you guys are out there investing in real estate, you guys already know I wish you luck and I hope you win.